Hello and welcome to Northeast Live election special. My guest today is NDPP leader Mr. T. R. Jeliang, the former chief minister. Mr. T. R. Jeliang, welcome to Northeast Live election Thank special. You. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, you know, what is the mood on the ground? Uh, you have already kicked off your election campaign and you said that uh, the NDPP BJP combined is going to get more than 34 seats on your own. What is the source of this confidence? Oh, gee, people respond today in a kickoff campaign. That is, uh, the response is uh, great and uh, people are happy. So we hope that uh, things will turn into the right uh, direction and results should be okay. We are expecting that we'll get the uh, topping majority in my constituency. Right. And as you mentioned that we are expecting that NDPP alone will get 30 plus. We cannot uh, mention the exact number at this moment. But our speculation is that uh, more than 30. But after a week or so, we'll come to know the real uh, picture on the ground. Now, that's a very and interesting statement uh, you have made, uh, Mr. Jaliang. If the NDPP, as you say, is likely to get more than 30 seats, suppose that happens. Yeah. Suppose that happens, yeah. will you still go as an alliance with the BJP? Or in that situation, you will try to form the government on your own? No, no, no. This is a gentleman agreement between both the parties, BGP and NDPP. So whether we get less than 30 or more than 30, the coalition will continue because it is a commitment, political commitment. So we cannot leave this BGP. Now you see, for the last one and a half year or so, there was an opposition-less yeah. government in, in Nagaland where yeah. NDPP, NPF and BJP, they worked together. Uh, yes. Now, there was no opposition. Nobody was criticizing each other for the last one and a half year. And suddenly, mm. now it is election time, and there are attacks against one another uh, to some extent. Now, my question is, Mr. Jaliang, do you think that is going to create some confusion among the voters across Nagaland? No, it was weird. There is no confusion in this. 60 members came together and formed an uh, opposition-less government. That is uh, for a purpose. That is purely for Daga solution. Because we have to come together and work together. So that is one purpose. But on the other hand, political, political the coalition partner, different party have uh, see, different, uh, different uh, platform. So BGP and NDPP is not a new thing. Since 2018, uh, they have seat sharing and pre-poll alliance. And this time also the same formula has been applied, that 2040. And that is, uh, that is a political party, political party agreement. That is the pre-poll alliance. So and NPF and Congress, uh, we don't know what kind of alliance uh, they, they are having. So far, they have not come to the picture. But so, but we are, cannot say at this point. Yeah, but are you indicating? Are you saying that there is an alliance between the NPF and the Congress in Nagaland? I don't think so. I don't think so. They, they have no uh, pre board <coughs> alliance with uh, any party so far. Right. Yeah. Now, one thing which everybody is interested in knowing, you know, in 2018, uh, Mr. Jeliang, uh, Nagaland was swept with the slogan, no solution, no election. Uh, now, this time, uh, you know, you, you had, you know, formed an oppositionless government. Uh, the 60 MLAs tried to give uh, work together to give the final push, but still that has not happened. Now, uh, what are you going to tell the voters as far as the Naga issue is concerned? Do you think the people are beginning to, uh, you know, view whatever the political leaders say with a lot of suspicion, with a lot of, uh, with a huge pinch of salt? Uh, yeah. No, there is no confusion. See, we still have a high hope that Naga solution can take place 
even the post election see we 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 have given our best and we have given the utmost importance to this uh, solution to naga political problem but unfortunately the nationalist groups nsnim and uh, seven and npg could not come together but now since they have signed their concordance and they have reaffirmed their position to work together towards naga solution so we have a high hope post election that uh, will 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 continue will continue to facilitate and will give our best for early solution you know early solution is mm. right you know only 24 hours ago the nscnim has published a normal calendar you know 2023 calendar now mm. <clears throat> in the first phase in the first phase it's a normal calendar but in the first phase they have said that the issue of a flag and constitution can never be compromised that means they are absolutely bent on not compromising on this demand for a flag and constitution for the nagas now after the election the results will come there will be a new government in nagaland but you are back to status quo it is things are back to square one yes as i as i mentioned earlier now if the two negotiating groups come together and work out a formula for amicable settlement there is a way out to come to a conclusion but when the other group say that we don't require flag and the other group say that uh, flag is our see flag is our way of life and without flag no solution so difference between these two negotiating group has also created uh, some kind of hindrance but now they have come together so we believe that they can uh, they can work out uh, they can work out a common draft paper because formulation has to come from our side india government cannot just bring out uh, this uh, co common uh, draft paper but if naga two group two negotiating group can sit together and hammer out the differences then the, the common draft can be prepared from our side also with amicable settlement amicable settlement when you have to compromise compromise they they, they should right. not stand by what is their demand but whatever is possible we have to look at that post angle also possibility and impossibility because they both have discussed enough and they understand its other difficulties government of india also knows that uh, what naga people want and for the demand for the last more than 70 years now and uh, nagaland right. naga naga negotiating also understand what is possible and what is not possible so amicable settlement is required with mutual mutual understanding right uh, and if this if these two group come together then mutual understanding can they can arrive at mutual understanding and that can that can, that alone can come out with a with a formula to resolve this issue right now 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 mr jeliang you know you have seen it all you are a veteran political leader you are a very respected political leader in nagaland you have seen many elections uh, now during yeah. election time uh, you know the ordinary person the common man that common man is concerned with good roads common man is concerned about livelihood common man is concerned about jobs uh, a good infrastructure drinking water so these are the issues the common man is bothered about but in nagaland mr jeliang uh, you know for no fault of yours the all the political parties they had to concentrate and focus their entire energy on trying to solve the naga problem do you think in doing so these basic issues have been neglected these basic issues have been uh, ignored even if you didn't want to no no you should not ignore the, what is the basic requirement of the people maybe it in the field of education or or well, uh, water supply or power supply all these basic requirement we have to continue and we need to streamline the working system somewhere 
somewhere something goes wrong. So now, if the next government, uh, if we can form the government, we, we will streamline the system and uh, take it forward. Naga issue side by side that it has to go along. But basic requirement in the day-to-day the -day life uh, for livelihood of the people that we have to give our best effort and try to implement according to the needs of the people. Now, yeah. see, you have been out of the government for some time, uh, but now yes. you have come back to the NDPP, and if the NDPP yeah. and the BJP comes to form the government, we assume that you are going to hold an important position. Then, will, will you try, will you and the government, if you win, Will you try to do these two, two things simultaneously, Naga issue parallelly and development and infrastructure and needs of the people parallelly? Is that what you are take, talking about? Yeah, yeah, it has to go side by side. Daily requirement we cannot set aside when while fighting for this uh, Naga solution. Mm. So under the leadership of uh, Nifurio, we have uh, decided to work and post-election I think uh, we can sit together and work out uh, the system to streamline the system. So the position that we don't, uh, we don't have anything in our mind now, but in the government we can share our mind and uh, we will uh, figure out what is to be done and what will be best for the people. But since uh, we are working together now. I just want, uh, I have already got the answer, not, not just from you, but from other leaders. They're saying that we are fighting the elections under the leadership of uh, present Chief Minister, Mr. Nephew Rio. So, so yes. it is almost clear that the, as far as the NDPP, BJP concerned, uh, Mr. Nephew Rio is the Chief Ministerial candidate uh, in these elections. Yes, yes. We are fighting uh, in election under his leadership. And post election also, the, there is no, uh, there is no problem. So the and issue, uh, the issue of chief minister is already settled. If the NDPP BJP wins, there is no dis discussion on that. Mr. Nafirio is, no is going problem. to be the CM. Yeah, there is no leadership problem. So it has to continue as it is under, yeah. his, under his leadership. Uh, now, Mr. We Chiria expect that the next government will inform under his leadership. Absolutely. Now, Mr. Jillian, yeah. you know, uh, it, you have begun your campaign in Perrin. Uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's the homeland of the Jillian Grong, Nagas. Uh, you know, I have yes. a personal attachment with Perrin because that is the place where I started my, I went to my first school, by the way, for your information. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, mm. now the, my question good, is, good. <laughs> what are you telling what are you telling your voters? What are the three most important things that you are highlighting in your election campaign? No, as I said, they are, they are, they are happy. The response is very good because we are yet to start our campaign, but uh, people's response is very, quite positive that uh, we don't have any doubt. No, what are you telling? And what are you telling your voters? What are the three most important assurances or promises that you have given your voters? No, I am going to tell them, and today I have told them, that uh, during this last tenure, four years I was in opposition, and my dream could not be transformed into a reality hmm. as I was in opposition. But if people voted for me to power, and if we form the government, then we'll continue, we'll continue the effort to, to translate the dream into a reality. Because, for example, I have started the model township in my district headquarters, and more than 40 offices were constructed. But for the last four or five years, we could not take it forward. But now if we form the government, I think we need to we need to give our best and streamline the working system in various departments. And see, not only not only parent district, but along with Nagaland, I think we have to we have to do a lot of uh, exercise. Now now to now you see streamline the system. Mr. Jeliang, uh, you yes. are a you are a pan Naga leader. You know you have a following across Nagaland. 
uh, you are not just representing your own constituency. You had been the chief minister. My question is, what are the areas, what are the focus areas uh, that the next government need to give to Nagaland? Uh, let us keep the Naga issue aside. Other than that, what are the three, three to four focus areas that Nagaland needs urgent attention from the government now? No, we have uh, see a lot of shortcoming. Despite all the department trying their best to uh, carry forward with the implementation of this uh, central sponsor scheme and the state uh, state uh, plan budget, but uh, somewhere the system uh, we have to we have to improve. So we'll we'll figure out after the election. We'll sit together and wherever changes are necessary, we'll uh, figure out. Like education, education system, uh, wherever we have uh, upgraded government high school to higher secondary, government ME school to high school, but they are so full of teachers. And uh, still, proxy teachers are, see, in uh, existence. So we have to streamline all this, like uh, water supply system, and ed education system that we have to improve. So together we will, we will work out. We will discuss and take it forward. Now, now I will not take much time. I will not take much time, uh, Mr. Jeliang. You know, my viewers, our viewers would definitely like to know what prompted you. Why did you decide to leave the NPF and join the NDPP? No. Is towards Naga solution we have from opposition last government. So still we have uh, see two regional strong parties. Sometimes uh, it is not comfortable. So two regional if we can come together and form a formidable formidable size, and then the, we can provide a stable government along with BGP. That is the region that we have come together to provide stable government. For, uh, for, for progress, and for Naga solution. So right. we have come together. Hopefully, that uh, our coming together will bring out uh, better results, and will provide a stable government. Now, 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 you see, you you are saying that you know there there should not be two strong regional parties. It will not uh, benefit anybody. But the point yes. is, Mr. Jiliang, the NPF is on its own is contesting only about 30 to 35 seats. They are not even contesting uh, 50, 60 seats. The, they, they they are contesting yeah. only about half of the seats. So what does it mean? One of their senior leaders had told our channel that they are not getting candidates. <laughs> so. No, it's up to their performance. <laughs> it's up to their performance. Because since I have left the party, <laughs> I have not much of idea about their, see, uh, their ideology now. Because they have only four MLAs. Out of four MLAs, one decided to retire from politics. So he, he has, uh, he has uh, given his blessing to one of his peers. And he requested us to give ticket to that man. So he has taken NDPP ticket. So now basically, they have only three MLS in the field now. They are in the fray now, three MLS, sitting MLS. And the new candidate, we don't know what will be, the, what will be their uh, future and what will be the outcome. Right. And, and finally, Mr. Jiliang, what would you like to tell the voters of Nagaland uh, ahead of these elections, because this is a very interesting elections. Uh, it is not like, you know, the tempo is not picking up even now. Of course, we can understand the reasons why it is not picking up, because everybody was busy with the solution, the discussion, the dialogue, and only now the electioneering is slowly picking up. Uh, what would you like to tell the general uh, people of Nagaland at this very, very crucial juncture? You see, our message to the people is that uh, we tried our best for Naga solution before election. But since it has not come to a conclusion, we will go to election, form the government, and we'll continue to work for Naga solution as in the past. 
and we have not lost hope that Naga people should not lose hope that solution will not take place. It should take place and it will take place. Provided this uh, national group, nationalist group, both the negotiating group come together. Fortunately now, under the banner of this uh, FNR, they have come together. So we have a high hope, post solution, this can be taken forward. And they will arrive at a, a conclusion with a compromise, uh, amicable see, uh, formula. Right. I, I, I hope, I hope, looking back, looking back, uh, you are not regretting that there was an opposition, you decided to go for an opposition-less government uh, in the last one and a half year. Do you regret that? Yeah, yeah, no. That let us see post election because uh, different political parties are there. So post election we'll see that whether we'll con will continue with the same opposition less government because it depends on the political parties. So we cannot decide hmm, on our own. So Absolutely. let us see after after election. Let us see what will be the. What will be the outcome? Absolutely, absolutely. We have to wait and watch till yeah. the elections are over. Yes. Anything can happen, but the focus will be on development of Nagaland. And that is what you were saying, Mr. Jeliang, that development and infrastructure and other activities has to go side by side with the efforts to come up with an acceptable yeah. and yeah. honorable solution to the Naga political mm. issue. Mr. T.R. Jeliang, leader of the NDPP, thank you very much indeed for speaking to me thank you. on Northeast Live. Thank you, Sabah.